The Carrier Strike Group is a highly flexible naval force that can operate anywhere in the world in all weather conditions. The primary role of the group is power projection, while the escort ships and submarines are responsible for defense and support of aircraft carrier. The air wing of a single aircraft carrier can outmatch the might of the entire air force of several nations. Today, we'll discover how these strike groups operate in vast oceans around the world. Before we begin, make sure you hit that subscribe button to get notified for more amazing content. Number 1. The carrier strike groups are not restricted to a specific composition and can be modified depending on threats, roles, or missions. As a result, the composition of two strike groups may differ. The usual formation of the group consists of 7,500 personnel, an aircraft carrier, one cruiser, two destroyers or frigates, a carrier air wing of 75-plus aircraft, submarines, and supply ships. Now let's play a game, but first try to guess its name. A video game that you can play against AI-powered servers and millions of other players worldwide. This game features boss battles and 600-plus champions. I give you three hints, but I'm sure you already know what I'm talking about. Raid. All right, guys, let's talk about Guardian of the Void Keep, Malik Kavar, one of my personal favorite bosses. This guy was a priest of the light at one point, but he had an epiphany while stargazing one night. The way he saw it, light wasn't much of anything without darkness. Maybe he was right. Maybe not, but his fellow priests don't care for it, and they kicked him to the curb. He's armed with very dangerous void potions, which he can use to nuke your whole team. However, you can block his potions by shield buffs or cleansing debuffs on his boss. Raid has a lot going on this month, with a fresh rotation of the brutal Hydra boss, and tons of events and tournaments every single day, including some special Valentine's Day events where you can play with brand new legendary champion. Click on the link in the description below, or scan QR code on your screen to get cool bonuses, like a free epic champion, Aina, 200k silver, 1 energy refill, 1 XP boost, and 1 ancient shard. You can call these awesome champions as soon as you get in-game. All these treasures will be waiting for you here. Don't waste time as the offer is only valid for 30 days for new players. The centerpiece of a strike group is an aircraft carrier designed to act like a floating airbase. The U.S. Navy operates 11 nuclear-powered aircraft carriers and various smaller amphibious assault ships. With a price tag of $15 billion, the USS Gerald R. Ford is the latest aircraft carrier commissioned by the U.S. Navy. This supercarrier has displacement of 100,000 tons and is powered by a nuclear reactor. Operated by a crew of 4,600, the aircraft carrier has the capacity to carry up to 75 aircraft including F-35, F-18 Super Hornet, Hawkeye, Growler, helicopters, and unmanned air and combat vehicles. The carrier is armed with Sea Sparrow missile launchers, rolling airframe missile launchers, and Phalanx close-in weapon system to defend itself. The cruisers are designed to perform multi-mission warfare including anti-surface, anti-air, anti-submarine, strike, and ballistic missile defense. The cruisers are heavily armed with a wide range of missiles, Aegis ballistic missile defense systems to defend the whole group from hostile aircraft and missiles. The cruisers are even equipped with anti-satellite weaponry. As of today, the U.S. Navy is operating 22 Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruisers. These multi-role ships are armed with 122 vertical cells for launching anti-air missiles and Tomahawk cruise missiles. The Tycos class is equipped with specialized helicopters to conduct anti-submarine warfare. For air and surface warfare, the ships are armed with extensive range of missiles and harpoons. The cruisers are equipped with two 127mm artillery guns. The cruisers are armed with two 25mm Bushmaster cannons, four 12.5mm machine guns, and two close-in weapon systems. For submarine warfare, the cruisers are loaded with six torpedo tubes. Slightly smaller than a cruiser, the destroyers are designed to conduct multiple roles as these ships are capable to attack and defend depending on the mission of the carrier strike group. The destroyers are equipped with Aegis combat system to detect and engage enemy aircraft and hostile missiles to protect the entire group. For land attack, the destroyers are armed with both conventional and nuclear-tipped cruise missiles. For surface warfare, the ships are equipped with harpoon missiles, 
The destroyers are outfitted with Sea Sparrow missiles and six-barreled close-in weapon systems for self-defense against anti-ship missiles. These warships are armed with 127mm naval guns. The ship is equipped with six torpedo tubes for launching active and passive homing anti-submarine torpedoes. The strike group consists of a nuclear-powered attack submarine. The submarine supports strike group by hunting and destroying enemy submarines and surface ships, projecting power with Tomahawk cruise missiles, conducting intelligence and reconnaissance missions, and engaging in mine warfare. The U.S. Navy operates three classes of attack submarines, each specializing in specific type of warfare. The supply ships support combatant ships and other naval operations by keeping a steady supply of food, fuel, and ammunition. Number 2. The roles of escort ships and submarines are not restricted to offensive tasks as all the ships can conduct defensive operations as well. The carrier's air wing assists in strike group defense through combat air patrols and airborne anti-submarine missions. The commander of the carrier strike group reports to the commander of the numbered fleet who is operationally responsible for the area of waters in which the carrier strike group operates. Number 3. Once the carrier strike group commander detects an enemy, it's categorized in four threat classes. Class A threat requires forceful and immediate response. This might be a group of sea-skimming missiles racing towards a capital ship or something as powerless as a tugboat. Class B requires fast action but does not threaten the mission, for example a small boat detected in the outer screen. Class C includes significant threat detected far away that can be engaged to destroy it or to avoid it. Class D is a target which is not a threat and the destruction of which does not aid the assigned mission. Number 4. Once the enemy threat is categorized, the fleet is positioned towards the threat axis. The threat axis is the direction from which an enemy attack is expected. A standard formation has several layers of defense in place to protect the aircraft carrier. The picket ships, combat air patrol aircraft, and airborne early warning aircraft are deployed 200 nautical miles away from the aircraft carrier. The outer screens units operate between 12 and 25 nautical miles from the aircraft carrier. The inner screen is only 10 nautical miles away from the aircraft carrier. Once the enemy approaches picket ships, the outer screen ships engage the enemy with their multi-role capability. The helicopters on these ships are deployed for standoff engagement. These ships can also engage enemy attack aircraft with their long-range defensive missiles. The ships and inner screens are armed with a higher rate of fire weapons for enemy missiles and active sonar for underwater threats. Number 5. The enemy can strike from 600 nautical miles away, which is a huge area to scout. In such a scenario, electronic warfare platforms are deployed to mislead the enemy. The hostile stealthy submarines are the biggest threat to a strike group, therefore a combination of escort ships, aircraft, and submarines are deployed to counterdetect and destroy enemy subs. This is called anti-submarine warfare triad. The long-range missiles fired from enemy ships or aircraft are extremely deadly as the strike group has a few seconds to respond. The airborne early warning aircraft flies 100 nautical miles ahead of the group with fighter aircraft to detect enemy. Once the enemy is detected 180 nautical miles ahead of the strike group, combat air patrol consisting of fighter jets armed with air-to-air -air missiles engage enemy aircraft. As the engagement progresses, reinforcement jets arrive with full weapons load. In case the attacking aircraft or missiles penetrate the outer defenses, the Aegis-equipped destroyers deploy their silent SAMs to destroy them. In case the enemy raid further advances, the heavily armed cruiser can go active and destroy the incoming enemy. So do you think that a US Navy strike group is really a formidable Navy force for power projection or just hype? Let us know in the comments section. Also, be sure to like, share, and subscribe.